Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Freedom Shift, where you discover how to have more time, have more money, and live the life of freedom that you always dreamed of when you started your business. I am Janet Clark, your host for The Freedom Shift, and also the proud founder of InboundSalesGrowth.com. I am here today with Dr. Stephen G. Jones, and Dr. Jones is a hypnotist. And he's going to be talking to you today about ways that you can uh, improve and change your mindset. So it's very exciting. So let me tell you a little bit about uh, Dr. Steve G. Jones. He has uh, been working with clients for many, many years to take them to the next level in their life and obviously in their business, since that's what we're here to talk about today. And uh, he has really affected so many people in so many positive ways. Imagine if you really could live the life that you deserve. Imagine if you could live a life where you had unlimited wealth, unlimited focus, and all the confidence that you needed to bring yourself to a new level of existence. It will be amazing when you hear of the ways that this mindset shift can take place and how Dr. Steve Jones has actually worked with clients to help that. Um, you all have probably heard of the uh, book The Secret and one of the stars of The Secret is Dr. Joe Vitale and he has uh, been a client of uh, Dr. Steve Jones and I'd like to just read to you uh, a quote that uh, comes from uh, Dr. Joe Vitale. And he, he says, uh, Steve's empowering resources will help you. He is the leading authority in the world on hypnosis for a reason. And he easily gives you the help you need to take your life to the next level. So Dr. Steve Jones has, uh, is a member of the National Guild of Hypn Hypnotists. He's on the American Board of Hypnotherapy, president of the American Alliance of Hypnotists. And he is a board-certified clinical hypnotherapist. He's been practicing hypnotherapy since the early 80s. And he is actually the author of 25 books on the topic of hypnosis, the law of attraction, and weight loss. So with great excitement and enthusiasm for this topic, I introduce you to Dr. Steve G. Jones. Welcome, Steve. Oh, thanks, Janet. I appreciate that. And... Uh... Uh, although I, I do appreciate you mentioning Joe Vitale, and uh, we do work together, we do a lot of projects together, um, I should clarify that he has not come to me as a client. He is not a client of mine. He is a, a business associate, and uh, we work together producing quality products to help people enhance their lives. Gotcha. Appreciate that. And um, it's just still uh, extremely uh, exciting that uh, you collaborate with him because he's uh, so well renowned for the secret. Absolutely. I'll uh, be meeting Joe next month in New York and uh, we'll start working on another project. I believe it's our our fifth project together. So uh, we, um, if anything, we, we help each other. Well, that's what we're all here to do on the Freedom Shift. So I know that your topic today is really a great one which is free your mindset with hypnosis. And, you know, I personally have had some experience with hypnosis, which um, I can't say enough about the positive benefits of that. But for those of our uh, listeners who maybe haven't done anything um, in that realm, could you talk a little bit about it and introduce us to the whole concept and, and why it works for business entrepreneurs? Sure. Well, hypnosis is a matter of changing your mindset. So uh, hypnosis is just a relaxed state of mind in which you're more open and available for uh, positive suggestions. We all go in and out of hypnosis every day. When you, um, when you wake up, uh, you're probably in alpha, which is defined as the, the lightest state of hypnosis. And so when you become fully awake, let's say you get in the shower and it's really cold, you go up to beta, which is full awakening consciousness. And then when you're driving to work, you probably this is just a typical day of a typical person that I'm describing. Uh, when they drive to work, they uh, probably go back down to alpha. Anytime you perform a, a task which you, you know very well, a rote task like driving, you can go back down to alpha, which is, again, the lightest state of hypnosis. 
And so you go in and out of hypno hypnotic states like this all day long without realizing it. You go into alpha anytime you're daydreaming or reading a book or watching TV or just about to go to sleep or you just woke up. You are in alpha, which is the lightest state of hypnosis. So the only difference between that and uh, going to a hypnotherapist or listening to a hypnosis recording would be two things. Number one, the hypnotherapist is causing that to happen by using relaxing words. And number two, they're putting positive suggestions in the person's mind while they're in that state. Other than that, it's just a matter of uh, just like you would naturally experience it in any given day. You go in and out of hypnosis. And to answer your question about uh, how you use that technology to help someone enhance wealth, well, when you think about it, all the limitations that you have in your mind that anyone has in their mind are there from suggestions that people have given them in their past. Uh, you know, rich people are evil. Some people get that in their minds. Uh, they get in their minds how much money they're worthy of. They get in their minds all kinds of things. These are things that aren't really true or false. They're just in people's minds. So the way to redo this, to undo it, to rework it, to rewire it is through hypnosis, through relaxing someone to that, that relaxed state of mind and, and rewiring that kind of stuff. And I, I know you've worked with clients um, in many different ways, obviously one-on-one, -on -one, but I think that um, you know now you're doing so much with these pre-recordings and that sort of thing. And is that is just as effective as working one-on-one -on -one with somebody? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think the most effective uh, way to uh, to get change is to work one on one with somebody because that way you're you know you're talking about the things that they want to to talk about. You're dealing with their issues, with their challenges. Um, whereas a recording is a, a canned uh, session, which is just uh, you know done without knowledge of that individual. Uh, but the good thing about recordings uh, such as mine is that in that canned session. Uh, you have all of the uh, all of the things that are that are known to work, all of the techniques that are known to work, all of the techniques from neurolinguistic programming, all of the techniques from uh, reframing situations, uh, all of them in a recording that that are known to work in an office setting. So although it's not as good as an office setting, uh, you know it's it's a lot more affordable than an office setting. You don't have to go to an office. You don't have to take time out of your schedule. You don't have to lose money from, from work to take time out of your schedule. Some people have to find a babysitter. Uh, and then when you get to the office, you have to disclose all of this personal information about yourself to the hypnotherapist. So you get to avoid all of that by using a, a hypnosis session. So you have the pros and cons on, on each side. Well, it sounds like for people who really want to just try it out, that it might be a great way to uh, to sort of get used to doing it and, and to get the, the uh, new positive mindset started. Oh, um, and what I'm wondering about is I know that you go in and you work with sales organizations quite a bit in businesses and that sort of thing. And if somebody were to want to enhance their sales, enhance their business, do something totally um, you know, different and, and stop getting bogged down in the negativity that seems to be bombarding people these days. How much time would they have to spend uh, listening to the recordings? Well, we recommend three weeks. I mean, that's something that's, uh, that the research seems to indicate, although it's multifactorial. I mean, it depends on, you know, what you're working on, who you are, what your situation is, how long you'll have to, that determines how long you'll have to listen to a recording. It also depends on how suggestible you are, uh, which can be quantified in the scale. But assuming you don't want to get into a, a lengthy analysis of your particular situation, we recommend an average of three weeks listening to a recording in order to cause some kind of positive change. And how long would each recording be? Well, they depend on the, the person producing it or the company producing it. My recordings vary from uh, a half hour to 80 minutes. My shortest hypnosis recording is a half hour. Uh, my longest one is 80 minutes. So uh, generally people uh, go for the recordings that are, that are an hour long. Those are the ones that I listen to. They're, they're an hour long. They're not too long. They're not too short. And can people listen to them when they're driving, or do they have to be in a state of uh, relaxation totally? No, do not listen to them while you're driving. And there's a legal disclaimer at the beginning of it, which is also a medical disclaimer, that you never play any hypnosis recording while driving. It's very dangerous. 
Um, so you must be in a relaxed uh, position, in a relaxed uh, state. Uh, I recommend listening to them when you're in bed at night uh, before you go to bed. Uh, just press play. If you fall asleep, that's fine. Your brain still receives the, the positive messages. And it's funny you mention that about falling asleep because I know that uh, when I was doing some uh, hypnosis in the past that worked great, I fell asleep quite often. And I always wondered, and, and it wasn't like a sleep like that I didn't, you know, I think if, if something had been said on the recording that would, you know, against my inner uh, being that I would have known that. But it was a, a nice relaxing kind of sleep where I couldn't really remember everything that was said, but I knew sort of what it was, what was being said. Is, does that sound like a typical reaction? Absolutely. Most people go in and out. They become aware and then not aware. And you're right. Your subconscious mind won't accept any programming. It will, it will not accept any programming. I'll be clear about that. That is not in line with, uh, with your morals, with what you would normally do. Yeah, I kind of wondered about that when I started, but then I recognized after the fact that there really was nothing that, it, I mean, I, I kind of knew what was being said, but I also was in such a nice state of relaxation. And what was amazing is that I noticed changes in my behavior without having to actually consciously make those changes, which was really amazing to me. Right, that's the nice thing about hypnosis. Uh, you'll, you'll start making these little adjustments in the way you do things without being consciously aware, without consciously having to try to do things. They'll just happen naturally. That's the beauty of programming your subconscious mind. Yeah, so um, I think it's a great uh, thing that people, you know, you mentioned that it takes uh, three weeks before it actually, you know, starts to take a big effect. But I think it's so interesting that this 21 days, three weeks, it just keeps coming up as a time frame that is a, a good amount of time to actually shift a, a, a subconscious belief or to make a mindset change. Right, and as I mentioned, the research uh, that we've, uh, you know, we've got aggregate research, which means, uh, you know, across a different, uh, you know, different uh, genders, different age groups, different situations, different personalities, different degrees of suggestibility. Uh, the research seems to indicate when we pool it as an aggregate like that, that three weeks is the average that someone should listen to something in order to get a change. Now, you can, some people get a change in a, about a week. Uh, some people it takes a little bit longer, but uh, three weeks uh, seems to be a, a good rule to follow. Yeah, so tell me what kind of subjects you um, would have available for people who, you know, are, are entrepreneurs and, and in the business, and, and what are the, some of the different things that you and your counseling have found that stops people from really succeeding with their businesses or making them grow to, to new levels? Well, the subjects, uh, of course, would be the same as the, uh, the, the challenge points for them, which would be things such as mastering the art of negotiation, overcoming fear of success, overcoming fear of failure, becoming more confident, uh, working on better public speaking, becoming more motivated, uh, developing charisma, a charismatic uh, personality is always helpful, things like that. And those so those topics of the recordings that I have available also sprang from, you know, working with clients in an office. When I had an office in Beverly Hills uh, for four years, I would uh, deal with a lot of, uh, you know, top-level movie executives and so forth. And these were the challenges that they were having, but they were also the challenges that uh, just regular business people were having who weren't, uh, you know, making $25 million deals every week. These were deal, These were situations that uh, all levels of business business people had. So, those topics are the ones that come up for everyone uh, when they're in business. Things they need to overcome if they want to go to the next level. Yeah, it's interesting that you you bring up fear of success because most people probably don't know if they have that fear. Um, is there something that you could help people to recognize that that might be something that they would listen to? Right, exactly. The, uh, the fear of success is very interesting because it's designed to keep you safe, designed to keep you feeling safe. 
and uh, most people don't realize that they are that they do have an aversion to success, and the reason they have it is because they feel that you know they got these subconscious ideas like rich people are evil, or if I become rich, I'll be a bad person, or if um, you know I become rich, I'll I'll separate myself from my friends, I'll I'll lose the rapport that I have with my friends who who are not rich, and things like that. And so getting rid of those ideas in your mind, some of which are actually true, you may lose a little rapport with your, with your friends who, who don't relate to you know, what it is to make a million dollars a month. If they, if they don't relate to that, then you may lose a little rapport. On the good side, uh, you'll have a whole new group of friends who, who do understand that and who think that's a small amount of money. So it's, it's things like that that get stuck in the mind that we need to re, reassign, reconnect, reassociate in order for people to get to the next level. Yeah, one of the things that I think is great about uh, the fact that your interview is early on in the series is that people, um, you know, thinking about money and growing a business is always going to involve some sort of an investment. And I think that it's important for people to recognize where they're coming from in their thought process about money. So do you have some uh, series that works on that mindset as well? Uh, we do have a series. Uh, we also have an individual recording, which I think is great, and that's um, Overcome Fear of Success. It's uh, an MP3 download, which is the platinum, a platinum-level recording. The platinum-level recordings took me about two years to produce, actually. Uh, it cost me uh, close to $120,000, and I hired two college graduate sound engineers and built a studio from scratch. Uh, we use Pro Tools, which is the same program they use in major motion pictures, and uh, a handmade microphone from um, handmade Rhodes microphone from Australia. So we use the top top of the line stuff. Um, so that's where this that's the the series, uh, the platinum series, is where this recording comes from. And I believe that uh, that would be the most appropriate, the overcome fear of success, because as as you start this, as as we venture into the the freedom shift, I think that. Uh, one of the things that people find that they don't realize, as you mentioned, is that they have a fear of success. So breaking that down uh, hypnotically, I, I think would be a great idea. Yeah, I think so too. And and it's great that we're we're getting this information so early on in the in the uh, freedom shift. So can you talk a little bit about sales? I mean, I think that is another sticking point for so many entrepreneurs that. It's, um, you know, it seems like it's a, a hard thing sometimes to think about. You know you're good at what you do. Every entrepreneur is in business because they really have a skill or a talent that they're very good at. But a lot of them really resist the idea of selling their own services. Yeah, that resistance is usually based on the idea that they would probably not be a, a good candidate to buy something themselves, to, to purchase the services of someone else, therefore they resist selling because they think there's something evil about money exchange. And so when you have that resistance, my, my advice to them would be go out and buy something for yourself. Go out and invest in yourself. Open that floodgate. When you do that, you're going to realize that, hey, when you, when you buy things, when you invest in yourself, you're actually doing yourself a favor. And when you have something powerful to give to someone else, you're doing them a favor by offering it to them, even if you're charging for it. So that kind of wipes out that whole resistance to selling. The resistance to selling is usually based on a resistance to buying because they feel that that, that exchange is somehow inherently evil or wrong. So I, I do agree that happens, and there's a, just a quick and easy way to break that down. Just go out this week and invest in yourself. Invest in self-help programs if that's what you're selling. Invest in business programs if that's what you're selling and realize that it's actually a good thing. And that brings up a great point about coaching because I found myself that the more that I was willing to invest in my business, invest in coaching, uh, it became so much easier to understand the value of what I was being able to bring to the marketplace. Absolutely, absolutely, and you also get a lot from it. You get a lot from other people's programs because you learn uh, how how they do it, and maybe they do it, uh, you know, the right way or the wrong way. There really is no right or wrong, but maybe for you it's not a good fit, or maybe for you it is a good fit. So you take an idea from that, 
and you make it your own. Or you say, well, I don't want to be like that, and so you decide that you're going to not be like that, you're going to be like this. So that really helps a lot when you're developing uh, programs and developing the way you're going to present yourself and so forth to check out what other people are doing. And, and what about motivation? You know, because there can be the whole thing about fear of success, or there can be the money thing, or there can be the, um, you know, the concept of selling. But some people, they just get stuck, and they just can't seem to figure out how to get moving. So do you have some advice for that? Well, motivation is something that's very interesting, because you have to be passionate about what you're doing, in my opinion. And sometimes people... You know, they wake up one day with a great idea, and they, they do a few things, and those things don't make them successful overnight, so they figure, well, that's just, it's the universe telling me not to do it. And it's, it's really not the universe telling them not to do it. It's the fact that it's a longer road than they thought it was, and they have to maintain their motivation along the way. So the best way to be motivated is, in my opinion, is to use something called a vision board that uh, my friend John Asaroff uses. He was also in The Secret, along with Joe Vitale. John just cuts out pictures of, from a magazine of things he wants to take, let's say, or things he wants to have, let's say he wants to take a trip somewhere, he can cut out a picture from a magazine of, uh, you know, a couple vacationing there. Next thing you know, he and his wife are there vacationing. Let's say he wants a certain type of car. He can cut out a picture from a magazine, put that picture of the car up, next thing you know, uh, he has that car, or he's able to buy it for a loved one, or what have you. So a vision board just keeps that motivation there. It keeps it front and center, so you're looking at it every day. So you just get a piece of poster board, cut out these pictures, put it up somewhere in your home where you're going to see it every day. That keeps you excited about it. That keeps you motivated. That keeps you moving forward toward it. Well, I love that idea, and uh, I've certainly heard it before, but I recognize that it would be a great idea to do that. You know, Sometimes it's great to hear these things that are uh, you know, just reinforced within us as uh you know, oh, I forgot about that a little bit. Absolutely. You've got to stay excited about it. You've got to remind yourself of it. And when you are excited about it and are remembering it, you're more likely to continue moving toward it. Yeah, it's great. So what else can you tell us that entrepreneurs who are looking to shift their business should know about, you know, how hypnosis can help them? Well, hypnosis is great, and uh, the, the recording I'm giving away I think is going to be a tremendous uh, advantage. But one thing that entrepreneurs need to realize is association really matters, uh, who they're associating with. Um, a lot of times people, you know, from one area or from one group of friends, uh, they tend to continue to hang around those friends while they're working on moving up to this level, where, where these folks are. And I... And it's not to say anything against their, their old friends. I think they should maintain them. And I have friends that, that choose not to be motivated, and I've had them those friends since childhood, and they're, they're fine. They're wonderful people. But you've got to start associating more with the people who are in the realm where you want to be. And all of the conversations that you have with this group of people are really not going to be very beneficial because they don't speak the language of the next level. They don't understand the next level. They have a thought about it, just like just like you do, just like anyone else at that level, just like just like we do at any level. But they but they don't understand how it works because they haven't done it. So getting an association with this group is going to be more beneficial. And I'll give you an example from my life. When I moved to Los Angeles, one of the first things I did was establish my office in Beverly Hills, 90210 Roxbury Medical Building. I was there with a bunch of plastic surgeons. I was initially. Uh, driving an older car that I had there and parking in the parking garage where everyone else was driving their, you know, their Jaguar and their Porsche and so forth. Uh, but I knew that I had to get in association with people who were successful. Next thing you know, I'm having lunch with one of the, uh, you know, top plastic surgeons in the country. We're hanging out as friends, as pals. The week before that, I wasn't even on this person's radar. They didn't even know who I was. So just by being in association, in proximity with that person, just by establishing my office there, I started to develop a network of friends who were very financially successful. I started picking up the language of people who were very financially successful. I started moving in that direction. Suddenly, it just made sense to make certain investments. It just made sense to raise my rates. It just made sense to purchase a nicer car, and it just made sense to become wealthy. 
That is so true. And I think that for some people, they see it sort of as either there's a barrier there that they can't get to that level of person that they want to associate with, or they just feel like um, there's some something in the way. What kind of advice do you have for people to, you know, okay, I, I think you gave us a great idea of moving your office and, and being in proximity physically, but what other ways? Um, because I think the internet maybe has opened up so many um, opportunities in that area. Well, absolutely, and anyone can establish themselves as an expert in anything overnight. I mean, just build a website. I, I see it all the time. Now, you'll want to make sure that you have training in that. For example, if you're going to establish yourself as a expert at you know, plastic surgery or dentistry or, or anything else that requires actual training or, or even hypnotherapy, you're going to have to make sure you have the credentials. But why not go ahead and uh, create a website if you already have the, the knowledge? And as you mentioned, most entrepreneurs believe in what they're doing. They, they have the, the skills already. They believe in themselves. Why not establish a website that promotes that? Why not get a Facebook fan page that promotes that? Go ahead and establish yourself. I hear so many people who want to establish themselves, and they say, uh, my, my friend, a friend of mine is working my website. First of all, never hire a friend to work on a website because you've got to have someone to yell at if things don't work out. You've got to have someone to say, hey, let's get on the ball here. I, I'm paying you to do this. You know, a friend, that's not going to happen with. You're not going to, to get on to them about it. Uh, you've got to have someone who, who is a business uh, contact who's doing it, someone who is responsible to you. They understand that if they don't do it, uh, they're not going to continue working for you. And there's the exchange of, of value. You're giving them money. They're giving you a website. So establish yourself uh, with a website. You can do this through elance.com, for example. You can find an expert at developing websites for a few hundred dollars. Um, you can get started. So definitely show up on the block. Maybe you're not going to get an office in Beverly Hills in the Roxbury Medical Building, but with the internet you can do better than that. You can show up in front of the entire world with your website as an expert in your field. And then of course you start doing interviews like this. Uh, you start producing products. You start writing ebooks. These are very easy to do. Uh, some of, most of these things that I'm mentioning don't cost much, if anything. Yeah, I always love it when one of the experts uh, gives me a great lead-in for inbound sales growth because, and, and does it inadvertently because they don't even know that that's kind of the business that I'm in or pretty much that's what I do, is help people to get themselves established online so that they are an expert in, in their industry. So uh, that, thanks, thanks for that plug there, Steve. That, that was great. Certainly. Um, okay. So um, let's, let's talk a little bit. You alluded to this free gift that you're offering, and I know that people are uh, intrigued with this idea of hypnosis. People are ready to make a shift because they're here with us today. And the reason that they're setting aside 21 days to step outside their business and take a look at it from with fresh eyeballs and, and through the, uh, the vision of all of these great experts that are here with us is because they believe that it's possible. And I'm sure that they're going to appreciate the uh, offering that you have that could just uh, help them get there. Sure. Well, as I mentioned, it's the uh, Overcome Fear of Success MP3, the platinum level, which, uh, as I mentioned, took a couple years and uh, about $120,000 and a couple highly trained uh, sound engineers to, to produce, plus me working uh, eight hours a day to produce this series, this platinum series, which is about 250 recordings. But one of them in there I think would be very appropriate to, to the group that uh, is listening right now, and that would be Overcome Fear of Success. What better way to go into something than to let go of your fear of success, which a lot of people think they may have let go of, but you know, if they have, then, then why are they tuned into this? The reason is because there's the next level and they know it. And part of the reason they're not there might be because of that fear of success that is unknown to them. So this just cuts right through that, allows them to be free of it and to move forward and to be open to everything else that's to come. Well, I think that's a great gift, and I know that in every person there's some fear somewhere, and it would be just so great to just be able to start reprogramming uh, what's inside our subconscious, things that 
maybe on the surface we would say no it isn't there but yet deep down inside in, in a, you know as you say in that subconscious where we were programmed early on in our lives there are fears and so it would make a lot of sense for people to take advantage of this right now to uh, to go to the the link that's on the screen to go and uh, take advantage of Steve's great offer and uh, see where this uh, next 21 days takes you. Absolutely. Check it out and make it happen. Thank you so much, Steve. We uh, loved everything you have to say, and we appreciate your taking your time to uh, speak with us, and we're so appreciative of the free gift. My pleasure. Thanks for making this possible. Yeah, you're welcome. And for those of you who have joined us today, we look forward to uh, another great interview tomorrow. So until then, go get your free gift, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.